See, Lala, now, if you could explain to us uh, maybe the first experiment, and then we'll talk a little bit later in the video about the second experiment. So we're growing mushrooms, and we're trying to find out uh, if different mushrooms grow at different rates with different kinds of uh, solutions in them. So we have plain water. This is our control. We just soaked straw, which the mushrooms like to grow on, in water and measured it and put it in. These are called mushroom beds. They have mushroom spawn and straw. And we've made three replications of this one. This is our control. And we have here, we have boiled water and straw. And over here we have EM soaked in, um, uh, straw soaked in EM. And over here we have worm compost that's been made into a leachate uh, or compost tea. And we have soaked the straw in that. So we're going to see the difference in the growth rate of the mycelia and the mushrooms between these three different soaked straws. Okay, these are sterile gloves and this is the only time where we really have to have somewhat sterile conditions because we're using of course boiled straw if I can get these gloves on. So the question might come up, why are we not doing this completely sterile in a laboratory? The very good reason is that we want to create an experiment that can be replicated in the field by another anybody. So we're trying to test uh, the easiest way to sterilize the straw to grow the mushrooms. And so we have this idea that the EM will, will actually do the job of sterilization a little bit differently because it's going to um, help the, it's going to kill the bad bacteria through co competitive exclusion with beneficial bacteria, which Mushroom. is a different process, but it will still um, help the mushrooms and it, it will help the mushrooms grow. Which we've shown in the uh, uh, previous trial. Yeah, that we, actually works we showed well. that so, we showed that in a previous trial that it actually does better than the boiled straw. And to some degree, we are repeating some of the earlier trials, but we just want to do it also a second time just to really show yes, this was all legit. I mean, even we don't have to because we had the replicates, yeah. but so that's pretty cool. Yeah, we've pretty much covered the, the how to or how we actually running this uh, little experiment. So that one was boiled straw. This one is water. This one is EM. And now we're actually working on the um, compost tea worm slurry. Okay, so all our trials are actually in this box because we need to have it stored for 10 days in the dark. And at the end of the video now we'll show you the results, which will be in a second for you, but for us it'll be 10 days. Oh. Look at that, that's amazing! So we'll bring everything out, oh my god. There we go. OMG, look at uh, that is crazy. So actually having a having them just growing like that on a plate where there's plenty of oxygen is actually a good idea, huh? Yeah. Huh? Okay, let's take them outside and look at results. Huh? All right. So should we start off with the plates real quick and then yep. explain maybe what we just did? Why? Uh, because we haven't filmed that section. What's the idea of the plates? We, you can see here we have numbers, 20, 40, 80. What do they refer to? They refer to the, the number of grams of ash we put on the bottom of the plate. Because so again, we're testing- Toxic test ash. Toxic ash, yes. Yeah. We put toxic ash on the bottom of these plates. We wanted to see, because we're trying to bioremediate toxic ash, we wanted to see what quantity would, would, it, would a large quantity hamper the growth of the M or the, the mycelia, or you know, what would grow. So you can actually grow these oyster mushrooms on top of incinerator ash, no problem. No we problem. have six replicas in, in, in itself because all of them have worked. Yep. So we've proven that you can. Yep. So that's great. I mean, that's just really amazing.
let's look at our control. This is just plain water yeah. and mushroom spawn and straw. So 50 grams of mushroom spawn is given to each one. Straw yeah. is given to each one. The moisture content, as you saw earlier in the videos, which was about eight days ago, is yeah. all the same. It's all the same. So we wanted you to see. So you can see the control. It's actually doing okay, actually, in one of them, but not so good in two of them. Yeah, it's actually not working much there at all. Yeah. It's not working... It's a little bit working there, and this one is actually doing relatively pretty good. Yeah. Okay? Okay, the next one is the boiled straw. So we boiled this straw. So that's basically a way of like uh, sterilizing it. It's sterilizing, killing off the yeah. mushroom spores and harmful bacteria. You were telling me they're using, of course, formaldehyde yeah, too. Yeah, they also use formaldehyde, which we don't want to use because it's toxic. Yeah. Okay. And expensive. And so. these are these are oyster mushrooms. You eat them, so you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, I mean this is this this boiled straw one is doing great. It's like coming out of all the little. You can see where we poked all the holes, all the little white polka dots. You can see all the, this. These are going to turn into little oyster mushrooms. Yeah. Which is really cool. Now, one thing I, we need to say at this stage, though, is it is a hundred times, one hundred times, maybe five times easier growing them in a tropical warm climate. Yes. Then it is maybe in a cold Irish climate, for instance. Yeah. You can do it, but it's just a little bit easier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In, in the West, where it's a colder, less humid climate, mm. you need a humidifier. And basically. you may want to boil your straw, for instance, just to make yeah. it a little... Because it takes longer... To break down. Yeah, so this is also partially, you know, why actually we're having some success. Because I mean, we are in a humid... Hot we're having place. excellent success, actually. I mean, if that's anything to go by. Okay, so... So here's... The, this is the EM. This is really doing even better than the boiled straw. Yeah. It's just... That's crazy. the best one out of all of them yeah. so far, it's is funny, it? Yeah, the, both both the plates and the bottles, the best one is the EM. Yeah, which is again this one versus... This is the best one out of all of the, the plates. plates. Even though, I mean, they are fine, but yeah. this one's best. And then yeah. this one is... Actually, EM isn't doing too good because with the spawn, you can see... That one's the, not doing good the top, at all. The spawn yeah. is kind of old, so... Yeah. Okay. Now, we did use, but you know, it's it's fair enough. That one's not doing so good because we've, we've used old spawn for all of them. Yeah. So that's fair so enough. So this one, and you can see again, the, the spawn isn't very good up top there. Yeah, that one is not so good, yeah. yeah. But it's but, growing down. But it's still growing down. So that's this not one a bad is one. okay, it's yeah. not too bad. And then our final one, we wanted to see how does worm compost tea measure up? Because that would also be a very inexpensive option. Yeah. So it's a worm slurry, of course. Yes. And we've we've done this experiment already. You can check out, as I mentioned, check out that video. And in fact, worm compost in the uh, worm compost tea in the last one did the best. Yeah. So you know, so it's this, again doing amazingly. This one is doing amazingly. Yeah. This one is the worst one out of the three. Yeah. So comparatively, all these three, I would give them roughly. I would say they they kind of unpair with each other. But the one the one which is our control is the worst off by which maybe is, 40 percent yeah which is what you want which is what you want so we're doing great this all these three methods are actually usable especially here in the tropical climate um you know and that's it's important to mention that of course yeah, yeah. cool you want to cool. look underneath the, the em <laughs> and see what if, how 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 deep it grew into the ash yeah so we're going to do some more experiments on uh, toxic ash Oh yeah, it didn't... Yeah, well, it grew, oh, yeah. Well, it grew on in, the, on, on the, the plates, side, on the but plate. obviously it doesn't grow into the ash. Now, the idea is that we're hoping... Now, the reason why we did this method is to see if it will even just grow, okay? We want to see if... We, is, is there a way of... Maybe this these enzymes will leach down into the toxic ash, and we will be able to test for dioxins breakdown or not. Um, but that's going to be a future video as well, so stay tuned for that as well. So that's it. Uh, that concludes the video. Hope you got something out of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.